Next on the agenda, we have uh, Mr. Buchanan. I guess Mr. Buchanan has two separate things to speak to us about. Number one is the tax ratio value of a penny and TCR's tax rate. And as uh, Mr. Buchanan presents this information, uh, let me just say, by, by looking at this on the agenda, it seems like it will be boilerplate, let's do now, and just kind of listen to Charlie Brown's teacher talk for a while. Do not do that on this conversation. Pay attention to what Eric's getting ready to say because it is going to have implications for us moving forward in the budget season. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Eric. Well, thank you. Thanks for that introduction, Mr. Broach. Um, absolutely. Please please pay attention because this is going to have a great effect on the budget process as we dive into budget hearings most likely in May. Um, first, I'll just walk you through the property tax and how we evaluate the penny and how that process normally works. And then we're going to go on how it unfortunately is going to work this year. So I'll start with one piece at a time. So uh, at the very top there is the real property at the that's your home, just like my home. Personal property is your uh, corporations and their property inside their buildings. And then the state assessment is utilities. So those three components come together to form our subtotal for our total assessment for Hawkins County. Then you'll see we reduced that by 300000 for pending appeals. Uh, there's always an appeal process going on, so we put that in there to get a safety net to allow for a little bit of loss of those assessments. So you'll see their total assessment. Now those figures, they're real figures from this year, but they are subject to change. I pulled them early so that we can have this conversation and get everybody on the same page. They will change. They are subject to change, but those are real figures for this year, pulled early. You'll see then our tax rate, 2.3177. So you'll see there that as the penny comes down, you take that assessment, you divide it by 100, and then multiply it by the penny, and that comes with a $136,000 penny at 100%. We don't use 100%. So you see a 7% variance there. That is what we use for our 93% collection rate. So our penny at 93% collection rate would be valued this year at $126,900, almost $127,000. That would be a good, very strong penny, and it would be up from last year if that was the end of the story. Unfortunately, it is not. Uh, down there below, you'll see that tax rate spread across our different funds that receive property tax and how that money actually makes it into different funds, general fund, highway, GPS, so forth and so on. So that's what it would have been. Um, you're familiar with the reappraisal term. We had reappraisal two years ago. So two years post reappraisal, you have a ratio year. And the best way I can explain it to you is the ratio comes into play because the corporations and the state assessed utilities get evaluated annually, where real property does not. We're on a five-year cycle for real property. So people didn't like their reassessments, but Honestly, they get them locked in for five years. The market has continued to move. Unfortunately, it's continued to rise. So those state public utilities and those commercial properties have said, hey, it's really not fair. They get a price lock in for five years. We're getting looked at every year. We need some concessions for that. And so, hence the ratio. Now, the ratio's been around for years and years and years. But unfortunately, it's never affected us like it potentially will this year. Uh, Mr. Looney, who is a property consultant with CTAS came by and visited all the counties in Upper East Tennessee, and actually I think he has half the state, there's no gentleman has the other half, and he's warned us that we're going to see a record ratio this year. Uh, he tossed around 31%. So a 31% reduction, it does not hit the real property, your homes, but it hits the uh, tangible personal property as well as the state assessed utilities. So in this column here now, we allow for that reduction so this is only going to be at 69%. You see the difference? That's $81 million off the assessment. It's $81 million. Again, just make sure you heard that number right. So when you take that $81 million reduction off the assessment, you'll see the value of our penny is actually $119,000, which is about, what, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 less than what it had been with no ratio. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a decreased value of the penny this year versus last year. And so how that comes into effect right here, you see spread across those different funds. Before you even hear your first request, before you hear the first state mandated increase, you're about 1.7 behind the eight ball. Welcome to the 23-24 fiscal year budget. <laughs> Just want to get that out in front of you as fast as possible. No, it's not good news, but the quicker I made you aware of it, you can chew on it, think it over, mull it over, ask questions. But that's where we're starting from. We have a decreasing value of the pain. 
Clear as mud. So here, yes, sir. If okay, so before we increased property taxes by 15 cents during the last budget cycle, during that time, our payment was generating about $123,000 per penny. I think it was 124 and a half, but yes, that's very close. We we increased the tax rate, mm -hmm. so now we're, we're 125,000, 126,000 per penny, 26 minus 67. Okay. So what we're saying is we we have increased the tax rate 15 cents to add almost approximately two million dollars to our fund. And as a result of the ratio being out of balance, now 1.7 million dollars of that buffer that we added has just gone away. If we change nothing, if we go into the next budget cycle and change nothing at all, 1.7 million of the approximately 2 million that we added from that 15 cents prop, uh, property tax increase has gone away as a result of the ratio. That's, yeah, that's mostly correct. Um, it, it doesn't actually have any change on the valuation of the penny, it's just how many pennies when you change the tax rate. The valuation didn't change. But yes, other than that, I, I agree with that statement. Our tax rate would have been 2.1677 without the 15 cent increase. Uh, there was a lot of controversy about doing that raise, but it was very necessary. Um, even with that, we still passed a budget last year that was 1.6 in the red. So had we not done that, you just imagine the shape we'd be in starting this time. So Eric, with this, um, obviously, no, I mean, None of us who own homes in Hawkins County are going to be paying less money, right? Like we're we're going to be receiving less. So, but the people who are, help me understand who is paying less in this scenario that is causing the reduction in revenue. The state assessed public utilities, okay, and as well as your corporations that have large amounts of tangible <coughs> personal property, so machineries in their factories. It's, it's a lot of times your factories that have that. Yeah. So for them to be treated equally as our citizens who have homes. Mm -hmm. In comes the ratio. And like I said, it's not a new concept. We just never had numbers like this. I think the worst ratio I've never looked back and find in history was about 08 09, last recession. And it was, uh, I think, 86.75, 86.25. So it's, it's affected us before. Quite often we have a ratio, we're still in the 90s. You don't really feel it a whole lot. But at 31%, only recognizing 69%, we will notice it. And those numbers are subject to change. The ratio is not locked in place. Uh, it could come back slightly better, but it could also come back worse. 31 is the number CTAS is warning everybody about, or at least in this region, it may be specific to our county, but 31 was the number he warned me with, so 31 is the number I presented to you. And that's, that was going to be my next question. So this, um, this ratio is, who sets the ratio? <coughs> Nashville. It comes from the state. This yeah, is nothing that we do in-house. Understood. And um, and that can differ region to region or mm -hmm. county to county. So the state says Hawkins County or Northeast Tennessee here your rate or, or your ratio, so on and so forth. I believe it's specific county to county, but I can double check on that for you. But they're trying to evaluate and be fair, and you know they're coming back to what our homes actually selling for. And uh, although the market has slowed down a little bit on volume wise, uh, the cost has not. Eric, can you help? The, the, I'm not wrapping my head around any of it. I know what it is. I don't know why yet. But why is it that an increase in property value leads to a decrease in personal property tax for industry? Because you're not recognizing the real property assessment. So just on a hypothetical house, let's say that house sold, or excuse me, reappraised for $300,000 in 24. That same house sold for $400,000. So you're locked in on that tax rate at a $300,000 valuation, even though that home today is worth 400000 So you're not recognizing that, but that is the data that they're using to calculate. When we did this reappraisal, are these reappraisals still accurate? And unfortunately, in a short two-year span, the answer is no, that they are not accurate. They are out of line. And so they're trying to give a tax break to these other entities who are getting looked at annually, who are staying closer to fair market value when we are not. So when, so essentially what the state is saying is that homeowners are getting a discounted tax rate because their yes. property appraisals are lower 
than what the actual sale price is going for. So they're recognizing savings as a result of real value and appraisal value. Exactly. If you don't have a sale or you don't purchase a new home, you're locked in for five years at that rate in 21, and that is not market value. <coughs> I guess I, I guess just thinking out loud and it still doesn't seem fair because it hamstrings the county government on what we can fund to provide services for those citizens. Yeah, absolutely. And as we move forward, unless my attitude changes, that's that, that's. I mean, if we're not helping taxpayers out if we're cutting, or if we're having to not cut services, but if we're looking at how we fund services, it puts us in a bind. Well, well that's absolutely correct. To to be fair to the process they use, so these so these public service utilities. What uh, so they were reassessed in 21 every year, right? And so, just like I was, mm -hmm. and uh, then they were assessed again in 22, and their taxes went up, right? Correct. And again in 2030, and so on and so forth. Whereas mine, while my home value increased in 21, I didn't have to pay extra in taxes. You won't see mine. you won't see anything until 2026 because we're on a five year cycle for our next reappraisal, and just <coughs> going back to that concept. Um, real property, five-year cycle. After that reappraisal, you get that year, and you get one additional year where you're locked in at one. There is no ratio. The year after that, there's a ratio study. We'll have this ratio whenever they finalize it for this year and the next. And then there's one more year where they do another study to see if that ratio is still adequate. Could go up, could go down. And then the next year, we will go back into reappraisal. And we normally don't hit that this hard, but but because of the ratio amount, I felt like it was imperative to go in a little more depth with this group about that process. I want y'all to remember this is a this is a conceptual idea. I mean, it, the numbers are there. We don't have the exact numbers yet. So, yeah. what I'm what we're saying is it's an estimate. We think that's what it's going to be. Either way, if it goes up or down at the point, we're still we're still going to be in a, in a tight situation. That ratio should be locked in. They told me uh, mid to late April. So as soon as I have that figure locked in, be happy to share it with you. Uh, that property assessment summary, like I said, I pulled a little early, so I can do this for you now. I will pull it in later. Uh, there are some businesses that they don't respond in time, then they don't get to take the benefit of this. Don't respond in time. They're going to want to recognize that benefit. But if they don't, if they fail to get their paperwork in, then they are not allowed to <coughs> receive that benefit. So, I mean, these numbers are subject to change. Uh, that state public utilities assessment, that's 22s because they do not make that available until December. We are done with our budget by that time. So, those are the best numbers I have at the time. Uh, they are hoping to see some growth there. So, if there is some growth in this public utility sector, it will offset that to a degree, <coughs> but it's not going to fix it. So plan for 31% and hope for the best. Absolutely. And this, um, these ratios are given every, there's a different ratio for every budget year? Is that correct or no? Reappraisal happens, brings everybody back to fair market value. Mm -hmm. Everybody. State assessed property, real property, everybody. You get that locked in for a year. So after the reappraisal, you get one year safety net, nothing changes. Then it's your first ratio study. So for us, reappraisal is 21, rates locked in for 22, mm -hmm. 23, reappraisal, 24, that same ratio, and then in 25, they'll look at it again to see if it needs adjusted anymore. So this ratio that we received this time will affect this budget year as well as next year's budget year until we level set in 25. And then go into full reappraisal in 26. And remember, in that fifth year, when they're determining if, if it's still valid, it could go either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the market could, could tank. We could see a lot better ratio, which is bittersweet because mm -hmm. the market's tank. So you're still losing in one form or fashion. <coughs> uh, or property values could continue to increase. We could see no recession, but then that ratio will be even larger. So it's, there's no win-win either way you look at it. I guess as, and I'll just say this, as, as a budget committee person and as a chairman of the budget committee, I thought last year we had made some headway into getting ourselves to a place where we didn't have to 
being whole. You know, a 50 cent, and, and this news tells us that we're, we're not really in a hole, but we're a lot closer to it than we were if all of this actualizes. So um, I'm just, I, I, I'll say this one but I'm tired of reactive budgeting. I, I would love to be a proactive budgeting king, and uh, it, it's just frustrating when you think you're on that track and then something happens out of the blue, and it's not anything nobody has any control of. I understand and share your frustration, but unfortunately, if that ratio might come out till April, yeah. it puts us in the reactionary category. All right, anything else? Any other questions? That's what we've made today. Copy the spreadsheet. Just know it's a draft. It's something you can't